Say amen, church. God bless you. This morning, the Lord laid in my heart to say something good to you. And from the words that shall proceed out of my mouth, may every negative thing concerning you be abolished. May every positive thing in your life begin to act. In fact, I activate every positivity in your life. Say a better amen. Daddy, I humble myself. Your name be exalted. Have your way. Speak to your people. Bless them. And make them souls of their kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we pray. Amen. This morning, I want to speak on a topic I titled, Living a Life of Honor. Or, you said, Living an Honorable Life. Look at somebody by your side. Say, living a life of honor. Look at your back and tell your neighbor, living a life of honor will profit you because one day, because one day, because one day, a record of remembrance shall be opened on your behalf. Did your neighbor believe you? Let him confirm it and say amen. There is always a record for every man born of a woman. There is always a record for anybody that a woman carried in the womb for nine months. And there are these two kinds of record. A record kept by humanity and a record kept by who? By God. Amen, church? A record kept by humanity and a record kept by who? By God. And that's why in a life of every man, you must try to live a life of what? Honor. Somebody say honor. A life of honor. If there is nothing you will go home with today, apart from the miracle the Lord has given to you, you must have to go home with something linking on your head like a clock. And what is that? I am going home because my prophet told me that I shall begin to live a life of what? Honor. A life of honor pays. A life of honor is a blessing. A life of honor will always be remembered at a time comes. When time comes, the book of Chronicles will be opened. Archives will be searched. And they will bring the archives out. Then thy name shall be written somewhere. Either in the book of honor or in the book of shame. It's a simple thing. And every child of God, born of God, should always try to live a life that is honorable. I want you to take me to Esther chapter 6. From verse 1 to 10. Let me show you something. Esther chapter 6. Amen. Amen. Esther chapter 6 from yes. verse 1 uh -huh. to 10. Yes. It says, mm -hmm. On that night could not the king sleep. The king could not sleep that night. And yes. he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. The king says, Go and get me the book of the chronicles. And they the were read. Archives. And they were read before the king. And those books were read before who? Church before who? The king. The king. And it was found written that Mordecai... Hold on, hold on. May I prophesy to you? Mm. A record will be read. Amen. Before a leadership on earth that you should be remembered. Amen. You know, before you go, the record of heavens open. Maybe after all of us has been raptured. Now, there are records that will be open here too. As long as you're still on earth. Is that correct? Oh, yes. I don't even talking here. There are records that will be open here. So, your prayer shall be that my name shall be in the book of honor. Okay, continue. What happened? And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bitana uh -huh. and Teresh, uh -huh. two of the king's tamberlines, hmm. the keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus hmm. 
And the king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Mm. Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house mm -hmm. to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in. And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Hmm. Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than myself? And Haman answered the king, for this man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear and the horse that the king rided upon and the crown royal which is set upon his head and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes mm. that they may array the man without whom the king delighted to honor mm. and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Mm. Verse 10. Uh -huh. Then the king said to Aman and the king said to Aman make haste make haste and take the apparel and the horse and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and, oh kai okay, kai okay. And do even so to Mordecai the Jew. And do even so to Mordecai the Jew. May I prophesy to you. It doesn't matter where you come from. Oh yes. It doesn't matter who is against uh -huh. you. You shall be clothed from today. Amen. I don't hear you. I said I don't care who does not care. But I care that the Lord will clothe you with an apparel of miracle. Say a better amen. amen. The story of Haman and Mordecai is no longer a new story to everyone. But there is a revelation inside that story. What is that revelation? The revelation is that Haman was a man blessed. A man promoted by the king. A man who had opportunity to work with the king. A man who was highly favored. Amen, church. But despite his favor... Despite his growth, despite his blessings, despite where he has gotten on the top, he does not want to hear a name, Mordecai. What got me angry in the story of Haman and Mordecai was one day Queen Esther invited her for a banquet. Now, when they got to the gate, the Bible made it so clear that Queen Esther never allowed any other man to come in with the king, apart from who? Haman. Then, at the entrance of the gate, Haman saw Mordecai standing on the gate. He became mad. Imagine where you're going to a president's office. You and the king has been permitted to see the president in his office. But at the entrance gate, when you were driving in, you saw somebody at the gate. Somebody who has not even come in. Somebody who is even finding access to go in. You who has gotten the access is not equally happy that somebody who just stood by the gate even came close to the gate. Not even being opportune to get to the office where you have gotten. Anybody that is on top that is intimidating you for your success, God will punish them. Amen. You not hear me. <laughs> I say anybody that have climbed the ladder ahead of you, and say no go better for you. Now that person is no go better. Now when you look at the mystery, you know, last Sunday I spoke, I don't know if it was last Sunday or last two Sundays, I, I spoke about somebody walking with men that has no what? Vision. Do you remember that? Walking with a man that has what? Do you know that when Haman returned home, he ran to his friends and called his wife and began to tell them, see, do you know in today's banquet, I was the only man allowed by Queen Esther, by the king, to come in with the king. 
by Queen Esther to come in with the king. But there I am not comfortable because I saw this man called Mordecai at the gate. No be inside though. This is the verse me. At oh. And he said to his friends and his wife, what shall we do? Now, for you to see, it is not good to marry a bad wife. That's correct. And it is not good to have a bad friends who do not have vision. The Bible said they began to advise Haman and they said to him, why don't you go and talk to the king? Let us prepare a gallow cubit uh, that has about uh, uh, five cubit height or, 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 or 50 cubit height of that uh, so that Ham, uh, Mordecai could be what? Hanged. So that Mordecai would be killed. And after they gave him that advice, they agreed so that those things could be prepared. But he never knew that when a man is fighting against another man, that might not be the proposal of God concerning him. It also matter the level of attack you have received. I have come to understand that when God wants to open the book of your record, he can even use sinners to bless you. I don't know if I'm saying something. Let me tell you. Brother, do you know that God can use a sinner to bless somebody? What God does not do is to use sin to bless you. But God can use sinners to bless you. You should be knowledgeable to understand the two meanings. One, God using a sinner to bless you and God using sin to bless you. God does not use sin to bless you, but God can use a sinner to bless you. Let me give this revelation. Somebody might be a prostitute. She's a sinner. Is that correct? And when God wanted to bless this man, he said to him, come, come here. He said to him, now, go and meet that prostitute. He shall give you the contact of the governor that I shall use to bless you. When you get to the prostitute, the prostitute, you will be began to explain the favor you expected from a particular governor from a particular country. He will tell you, ah, I speak with him every time. Let me give you the contact. In fact, let me call him on your behalf. The prostitute will call and you will go there and the man will bless you the way God has planned. Now, God has used a prostitute to bless you. But when prostitutes go and lay with a man and collect money, in making money with sin, is not God's blessing. But God can use a sinner to bless you. Is that clear? Now hear this. They never knew that there is a plan for this man to be blessed by the heavenlies. Now after the whole thing, when a book of record was opened and they saw the record, the honorable record of Mordecai. And the king said, what has been done for this man? They said nothing. They said, Kai, why? Why has this man not been remembered? What is going on? Now for you to see something again, this one is a prayer you must have to pray. Now, the same person who hates the other man very well was equally the person the king called to ask what shall we do? Hey, Kai, Kai. You know the worst thing that will happen is that the enemy he's asking is aware that you're the one. Ha. He would he would by no means project that kind of kingship and adorable blessings to him. At the last time when he heard it was Mordecai, he knew his time has come to an end. The man who believed that Mordecai will die. Among the two who died. Who died? He who has plotted the death of Mordecai. The thing returned back to center. A man who were nowhere. Who was nowhere. Became somewhere. And you who were somewhere before. Now is nowhere to be found. Why has this promotion come to Mordecai? Because he did something that was honorable. Every child of God that wants God's remembrance must always live a life that is honorable. Somebody say honorable. A life that you must be remembered with. A life that when your neighbor hears it, they will be proud to say, yes, he is my neighbor. 
I, I, I saw a blogger that posted one of my videos some time ago. So I was reading, the comment in that place was getting to almost, the day I read it, over 300. The other time I check, it's getting to over 1,000 comments. So I saw a particular comment somewhere. Everybody was praying. Some people will say, this one is showing off. Some people will say this. Some people will be praying. Then I suddenly read a comment of somebody. I don't know who that person is. The person said, I know this man of God. He was living in Ijesha. You know, when the person describes you, then you will know the person knows you. Because I've lived in Ijesha before. He said he was living in Ijesha. In Soso place. This young man, from even the time he had nothing, he was accommodating people in his house. I don't know that person. Else. He said, if God has blessed him like this and he's supporting people like this, this is not, he started it when he had nothing. So may God bless him. So now, I didn't know who the person is. Now, if I was not doing nothing then, when he equally see me now that God is bringing my future to a limelight, he will still say, ah, I know this man. Even that time, he was so wicked than anything. No, be so. Your record will be open for you at the time when they will ask the book of Chronicles to be brought. And what you must have to do as a child of God is to put your two hands clean, walk in the fear of God, and walk and have a record that is what? That is what? Honorable. If there is nothing you remember today, you remember that today, and the prophet said to you, that I should live a life that is honorable. A life that shall be remembered when I'm no more. A life that shall be remembered that even when God will open the record, he will be smiling. And he can proudly say, this is my son. There is something, even in life, there are things you will do, somebody will be proud. In fact, there are a kind of person you will become. And your neighbor will be on a public bus, passing where you're standing and you're talking. And your neighbor will come down, only to identify that you are his neighbor. But there's a kind of life you'll be living. And your neighbor will be in a public bus and see where you're standing and something is happening. He will be so afraid. So I even identify that he knows you not to talk of saying that you are his neighbor. May God never allow you to live such kind of life. May you live a life that is honorable. And may I prophesy to you, may your honorable life bring you a blessing that you have never expected before the end of time. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and say, my father, from today, I pray, I receive a grace to live an honorable life in the name of Jesus. Say amen. When a man is living an honorable life, you have nothing to fear. Even when men will what? Accuse you. Even when men will set a plot. I was watching uh, Pastor Chris' video a few days ago. And the man said, I have grown above criticism. He said, and I've grown above it when I was younger, not now. He said, I don't care what you say. As long as I know myself, I am okay. That means you should not allow what anybody say anywhere to bring a problem to what you are. You know yourself. And I can boldly tell you that I, Prophet Nonso, has grown above criticism. Anything where you want, make you do it. You never finish your man at crusade somewhere. Gain a full man, a boom man. He devil be chin, he devil be onion, he devil be chin, he devil be onion, he onion, he devil be chin, he devil be onion, he devil be chin, he devil be chin, I debu be chine ke, I debu be onye wem, I debu be chine koma, I debu be onye wem, onye wem.
Living an honorable life. If you are living a life that is not pleasant to God, if you are living a life that what you do is hide and seek, may the Lord have mercy. But I pray that that cause will be broken. That from you know, you know, the joyous thing you can have in life is when you, your children and your grandchildren come out. I hear, do you know there are some people today that their grandchildren do not use the name of their father to pass a police officer. They still use the name of their grandfather. You don't believe me, right? There are people today that instead of them to tell you, I am a son of this person, they will mention their first name and mention their great-grandfather's son name. The officer will say, hey, so, so, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. When you mention your father, he will say, who, 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 who be that? <laughs> oh, may you live an honorable life that even your grandchildren will be proud that they had a grandfather. You didn't hear me? Live a life that even God should be proud of. And my prayer for you, that God will give you a grace to live an honorable life. And no power will stop your testimony. Because her man couldn't stop Mordecai, nobody shall stop you. That prayer is for you that says amen. Put your hands together for this God. If you believe you're blessed this morning, clap that hands for Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless us in Jesus' name.